This is a game between Hao Ding and Min Jun Xin from April 25th. It's a game from Lanka Cup. Let's start the game. This is a pretty savage game from Hao Ding. Uh, let's call him just Ding for now, Mr. Ding. And black encloses a corner and white encloses a corner. And from here, this seems like a reasonable move, but Chinese is not dead yet. Mr. Ding decided to open with this kind of Chinese opener kind of thing over here. And Xin Min Jun, instead of immediately approaching the bottom right corner, something like this, he decided to enclose his another corner. Very calm. But the thing is, as amateur players, I won't recommend you to play like Xin Min Jun. This is how professional players play this game. Because what are you gonna do when Black plays this? Are you now gonna invade over here? Are you gonna play something over here? Uh, the chances are you probably don't know how to deal with this Moyo thing over here. So the best way to avoid getting into these kind of situation is to just don't let your opponent play like this. Just invade in now, right? Just avoid the trouble. Now let's continue from here. In amateur games, especially down and lower down players and more especially if you are in Q level just play this the chances are your opponent is going to play something over here and you get to attack first what if your opponent plays here then you can play boop 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 and what's your opponent gonna do like run probably gonna play some things like this and while doing all these you can grow something over here this is how as amateurs, we could play. Again, what happens if white plays here? Then again, you can play this Kosumi. The chances are if you are playing a Q game, if your opponent is a Q player, uh, your opponent might just block and you can go back to this situation. You get to launch an attack and while attacking, you can grow this part of the board and solidify this part of the board. So you are getting points and potential at the same time. Really good. But professional players, they know exactly how to deal with this kind of situation. So black plays over here. If white crawls, then black can just jump and we got a double wing kind of situation going on over here. This is also pretty good for black, especially in amateur games. At this point, you might have realized I used to only do older professional games because there are a lot of things we can learn and it's easier for us to understand. But I realized I could do videos on these current nowadays professional games. And while I'm doing videos on them, I could share how we could play these games instead. Anyway, let's continue. So if white cross black jumps, Black gets this double wing kind of situation. It's going to grow really ridiculously, especially in amateur games. So in amateur game situation, this is going to be really good game for Black. To be honest, even for professional players, this can get a little bit tricky. So white, instead of crawling, white reverse shoulder hits. And from here, Black if black crawls, white can jump or something. And this stone is also kind of pincering this black stone, right? So black, of course, doesn't want that. So black caps this white stone. This is saying you run and this stone is not going to die. While you're running, I'm going to get something over here, which is why white throws a stone over here. At this point, if black crawls, then white crawls. It's a pretty boring game. Can't say it's good for white or black. It's just a pretty mundane game. But black, instead of crawling, black decides to cut the connection. This way, black can kind of try to attack these stones. Uh, these two stones are not going to die, so we don't have to worry about that. While attacking these two white stones, black may get something over here. That's what black is trying to achieve. At this point, white doesn't really want black to play this powerful move. So white has to extend and black jumps. This jump, uh, I can't really call it a jump. It's one space extension slash shoulder hit. 
This shoulder hit is applying pressure on these two white stones and also giving these three black stones some flexibility. Now it's white's turn to block its ascent tape. Black extends white place here and black blocks when white hanets. Instead of immediately extending over here, black decides to hane over here. At this point, we got A and B. If you are white, which one are you going to play? So in this situation, AI actually recommends us to play A. Then black is going to play this extension and white kind of has to play this. Otherwise, it's going to get attacked. And now black can extend, white extend, black extend. And white is going to get a juicy almost half of the side. And black is going to make a turn and this side is solidified and black is getting some moyo situation going on again. Which is why Shiminjun decided to Atari when black connects and plays this to avoid giving black a too good of a moyo. Then black has really, this is a great move for black and white has no choice but to extend to kind of solidify the corner and black pushes first, white answers and black locks white in this corner. This cut doesn't work because now all the white stones are gonna die. Which is why instead of immediately cutting white play, this B. This is applying pressure toward these black stones and white is hoping to get something over here. At this point, most amateur players first instinct would be trying to run. Probably something like this. And some spicy players might even play something like this. Then white is going to get a majestic moyo over here. That is a terrible move. So before doing anything, Ding Hao throws a stone in the corner. White has no choice but to answer and attaches over here. Ding Hao plays this attachment to try to relieve the pain of getting cut over here. Although this cut doesn't work immediately, this is still a cut. It could turn into a painful cut. So to get a vaccine, attaches over here and white harness. And now guess what's the next move? I hope you got it right. Very easy one. Extend. From here, if white plays anything over here, let's say white plays something over here for some reason, then there is a chance of black playing this. It's going to turn into a very painful game for white which is why white went back and fixed this corner. Now, if black want to play safe, then black could play this A bump and white extends, black push, white extend again and black jumps out. Uh, this way, black has almost nothing to worry about and white also got some points here and there. So this should be a satisfying result for both players, but Ding Hao wants something spicier. Black, instead of playing this A bump and to turn it into a safe game, Ding cuts. Now, what are you gonna do if white plays here? We got A, B, and C. If black plays A, then white can just simply go home. Very boring. Black got nothing in return. And this black still has to play Atari. It's gonna turn into a very Blend result for black. Let's try B. If black plays B and extend, then white is gonna simply capture the stone. Is it anything better than what we have seen before? It's a very terrible shape thing going on for black. Black got nothing in return. We can't even consider it as a influence or thickness. Now let's take a look at C. What if black plays C? Then white is gonna try to come out. And we got A or B. Let's try A first. Then white is going to push and cut. And these two stones are going to die. Even if black tries to do something over here, white can Atari first and connect. White captures these in Sente. And black, again, we can't even consider it as a thickness. It's too thin. There are cutting points everywhere. And black still owes a move over here. It's a terrible result for black. Now, what if black plays over here? Then white is gonna simply push. And again, we got A and B. If black immediately plays this A, then white could Atari first when black extends, blocks the connection. If black plays over here, then white Atari and boom. This is a 
a lot of garbage stones for black. At this point, since black can't immediately cut, what if black comes out from here? Then white is gonna Atari when black comes out. White is gonna just simply connect up. We got a ladder over here and these three stones are gonna die. So what if black plays over here? Then white is gonna simply play here. And if black extends, then we have a pretty funny thing that's gonna happen, which is boom, 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 a letter. The game is gonna end. But what if black plays here, then white can just be alive. Still a very sad game for black. Which is why in the actual game, instead of immediately moving these white stones, white attaches on this right corner. And from here, we have a very common, almost Joseki-like thing that's gonna happen from here. Cool Tesuji. Black extends and white connects up and black letters these two white stones. Black gets some points and white gets to have a possibility of extending and get something over here. After all the exchanges on the bottom right corner, Shimin Jun finally bumps over here and black extends and from here again, we could go into the complicated destroying black shape kind of things. But Shimin Jun suddenly decided to just grab some points. After some exchanges over here, Shimin Jun got some pretty juicy points over here. And now it's black's turn to invade and destroy something. Now black plays over here. If you are white, where would you play now? I hope you got the right answer. This very reasonable move, right? And this is also a very common situation that you might face if you play this kind of thing in your corners. So remember all this. At this point, Ding Hao decides to play over here, trying to see what white wants to do. If white simply connects up, then black can connect back. Living over here is not a huge problem. So white cuts the connection. And from here, if black plays over here, and white plays over here, then black could play this turn. Now if white extends, then black can hane. When white blocks, black could cut over here. This is immediately threatening these two white stones. If white doesn't do anything about it, black is gonna get a huge corner and this potential is gone. If white ataris this one, then boom, 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 boom. Everything dead, very sad. What if white plays B? Then black, again, is gonna hane. When white hanes back, black can form a tiger's mouth over here. And AI actually recommends white to just connect up. When white connects, then black can just hane, hane back, connect up, and play away. From here, if white plays here, then black can play over here. And here's what's gonna happen. White, Atari, Black cuts the connection, White captures the stone, and Black can just simply extend down. What if White plays over here? Black is going to Atari these stones. If White connects, then this is a pretty juicy corner. White has no choice but to capture it, and Black is going to be alive on this left-hand corner. What if White plays B? Then Black can just extend. White could do this for some reason. And we have a ko over here. But the thing is, white doesn't really have any good ko threads on the board. So AI heavily favors black in this situation. Now let's come back to this picture. Instead of connecting what if white Ataris, then of course black is gonna turn it into a ko because the ko thread heavily favors black. White can capture this stone and this is a great ko thread. White has no choice but to connect back and black takes back this stone and white doesn't have any code threads that's bigger than this thing. Now that we have seen that A and B, those are all bad options, how about C? If white drops down, then of course black is gonna Atari over here and extend when white plays here, connects up. Now white has no choice but to connect up because otherwise, let's say white played something else over here, then black is gonna play this and this and this and that is a life. Which is why white has no choice but to connect up. Then black is gonna small nights out. Now we have a disgusting peep over here. So this is a very important move to play. And now black is going to cut over here. 
As long as black can turn it into a messy fight within white's area, black could get satisfied by that. Now that was a lot of variations, thank you for watching. And we have seen that if white plays this A, then white is not going to get any good results, which is why white plays this 3-3 three, three points. Now from here, if black immediately drops down, then white is going to have to play this move. And when black plays here, white has to connect up, and this is a sente. And now if black plays over here, then black is pretty much alive. In the actual game, Ding Hao, instead of immediately playing this A, he plays this. This is like saying, I want to see what you are thinking. If white immediately plays an A, then we are going to go back to this picture. Now black is pretty much alive. What if white plays B? Then black is going to cut first when white ataris, black atari back. If white connects up, then black is going to drop down and do all these sente moves first and atari and get a tiger's mouth. This is not going to get attacked. This is a very successful invasion for black. Now you may be thinking, what if instead of connecting, white immediately captures this dome? Then black is going to come outside. When white connects, black is going to make a turn and it is a pretty easy fight for black, mostly because white has too many cutting points, a lot of weaknesses. So we have seen both A and B variations. If you're Shimin Jun, would you be satisfied with that? I'm not gonna be satisfied with that. So Shin, instead of playing A or B, played C. Solidifying the corner and solidifying this part of the board. Since white didn't play A or B, it's black's turn to Hane up. Now black's stones are getting stronger, which means these white stones, they are looking a bit lonely. So we need some eyes for these white stones and black decides to capture this white stone. Very thick move. Now that this bottom part of the board, they are all more or less settled, white decides to shoulder hit to reduce this part of the black's board. And black pushes and white extends, black came back and blocks over here. What does this mean? This stone means I'm gonna keep pressure on with these white stones because you're not completely alive. Later on, they can play something else elsewhere and as soon as black get a sente, then black can hane and connect. This is a sente, so white needs to answer. And from here, since we have a stone on the first line, we can attack these white stones for real. On top of that, black playing this move, it is a pain in the ass. So white has no choice but to come back and fix the corner. Now that the top left corner is settled, black comes back and pushes over here. AI actually recommends to just simply jump. If black ataris, then just, just come out. Just don't get attacked. But Shin Min Jun out of nowhere wants to have a good fight with the black. White extends and black extends. If white blocks, then black is going to cut. To ease the pain of the cut over here, white pushes hoping black to extend and jump out or something. But Ding Hao actually ignores white and backstabs. White has no choice but to connect up and black harness. If you look at the board situation, these white stones are not completely alive. These are definitely not alive. And this is not completely alive. Now black is trying to get a lot of profit by attacking three groups of white stones at the same time. If white makes any mistakes in the process, one of them is gonna die. Shin Min Jun, before just jumping out, makes some exchanges here and there and jumps out. And Shin Min Jun makes some exchanges on the bottom side. Now at this point, AI actually recommends Shin to just play over here. When black connects, white has no choice but to connect, but white finally, doesn't really have to worry about getting captured over here. But Shin Min Jun doesn't want to get locked inside this black's fortress. So white decides to cut on top. When black connects, white has no choice but to connect up and black extends. Since white has decided to come out, so white has no choice but to jump out, now black extends over here. Now if white tries to connect up these two groups first by playing over here, 
Then first, black is gonna play over here. White has no choice but to block. And black is gonna play over here. And these two stones could turn into one of those critical, very important stones because there's a cutting point over here. White, of course, doesn't wanna give black these two stones, so it just connects up. Now we see why Ding made this exchange earlier because he can play this and lock white inside this side of the board. Now white has to live, so Hane, connect, and because we have a stone over here, black could play this one. Uh, black could play this two space, but now uh, it's gonna turn into a, what do you say, a gote for black. But black playing this one space there, white has two options. First, if white plays A, then black can Hane, when white blocks, black erases this eye, and now you can see white is not alive. Even if white clamps over here, black can simply connect, white captures that stone, and white is not gonna get another eye from here. Even if white could Hane, black is gonna get another Hane, and we get Atari Atari. Even if white cuts over here, we got a double Atari over here, so we can consider these white stones are as dead stones. What if white immediately attaches to this stone? Then black is gonna play away because at any time black can use this, this move as a code threat. In this situation, AI actually recommends Shin Min Jun to play over here to settle these white stones, but Shin Min Jun decides to play this seemingly safer move. Since white decided to save these white stones first, now, black is gonna cut over here and try to attack these two white groups instead. White first extends this stone to see what's up. Black answers it, and white cuts black. Black push, white answers, and black forcefully cuts the connection between these two white groups. White ataris this stone, and white is hoping black to play this and atari and capture these stones and because we have a cutting point, not even a cutting point, it's like a huge hole over here. So black can't really cut the connection, which means white is pretty much safe. But at this point, Ding Hao decided to capture all these white stones, which is why he simply played over here. Even if white captures this, white doesn't have an eye over here, which is why white plays over here, and black continues to cut the connection. If you look at this situation, there really is no way of white saving these stones. So white wants to get something done to these black stones by hanging out. If black immediately captures this stone, then white can just extend, and these are probably going to die. Which is why black played this attachment first to see what's up. Black doesn't really have to save everything over here. As long as black can get something out, it's good for black. White Hanes and black cuts. White Atari's black extends. White connects. And black Atari's. This way, white is not gonna have too much points over here. Now, Shin Min Jun really has to try something over here because otherwise he's gonna lose. So... He first plays over here, and Ding Hao plays over here, cutting the connection, and he attaches a stone on this corner, trying to see what's up. Black answers, and white plays over here, and black plays here to erase any possible eyes for white. When white cuts the connection between these stones and these four stones, black really has to do something, otherwise white is gonna be alive over here. And the answer is pretty simple. Just connect up. These two white stones are dead, which means these four black stones are connected. White continues to resist by cutting over here, and black simply answers. And white Atari's back, and black's next move is like saying, you are not gonna be alive today, brother. Boom, the corner is completely flat out dead. Next, white Atari's this black stone. Black simply connects up and clamps, black extend, white extends, and black simply connects up again. White connects up, black cuts, and white resigns at this point. Let's see why white resigned at this point. 
So what if white plays over here? Then black can simply connect up very easy. Everything is alive. All black has to worry about is these four black stones. When white cuts the connection, black can play here. There is a, if white ignores it, black can connect up. So white has no choice but to connect and black extend. They are not going to die. I mean, look at that. That is not going to die. Black has a lot of friends over here. Now let's take a look at this top right corner. If white captures this stone, then black can connect first. When white comes back and black can push in and the whole thing is dead. If white Han is over here forming a tiger's mouse, then all black has to do is just this Akari. And white extending is a sente because if white plays anything else, I mean, if black plays anything else, then white is going to get connected. See? So black has to answer that. And what if white plays this? If you want to try out this life and death problem, then you can pause the video and try it on your own. Okay, welcome back. And let's continue. If white plays here, then black can play over here. If white connects up, then Atari extend that is dead. If white plays over here, then first black is going to play over here. When white captures it, boom, that is not a real eye. White has only one eye, so the corner is dead. When black plays here, if white connects, then that is immediate death for white. That is why when black played this cut, white resigned. Pulling out this stone is not going to do anything much because white can't really do anything to these four black stones and white has no chance of living in this corner. That's it for today's video. Please remember to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more games like this. If there are any games of specific professional players that you want me to do, then please let me know in the comment section and I will see you in the next video.